راح تشتغلوا عليها وانه تكونوا نجحتوا بانكم تكونوا الفرق الخاصه فيكم هلا بس لا اشوف يعني شو احساسكم بعد اول يوم كيف كان اول يوم بتقدروا تعطوني ثمس اب من اختيار الرياكشنز وعملوا ثمس اب اذا كان اول يوم كويس Hello. Hey, Jessica. Hi, how's it going? Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you okay. And now we can start the interpretation as well. So, Jessica, I would like to welcome you and welcome everyone else joining us in this session. Um, we are very excited with our second webinar for this hackathon. Um, the teams have been working all day long to form their teams and hopefully they all now, or at least most of them by now, have an idea about um, their teams and uh, the, the challenges they're going to be working on in the hackathon. Uh, so Jessica, before you start, I just want to give you a heads up. Um, sorry, just a minute. Okay. Um, guys, I'm sorry. Now, no, you can interpret. Uh, interpretate now and others are going to hear you. While you are speaking, uh, we have two interpreters who are going to be um, interpreting the session for everyone else. So if you could just take a little bit slowly. Um, and from now, I'll leave it for you, Jessica, to introduce yourself and then um, start the webinar. Okay? Sure. Sounds good. Well, thank you everyone for having me. My name is Jessica. I am a software engineer at a telematics auto insurance startup. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. So let me share my screen. Great. Can everyone see my screen? Um, so today I'm going to be talking about coding for a hackathon and specifically on the agenda we'll be planning for a hackathon, group management, troubleshooting, technical decisions, documentation, and demo. So the main takeaways I want you to get from this hackathon are that prizes are great but your main goal should be to be learning something new. This is a learning experience. Um, that being said, you should avoid using too many new technologies. This is only a three-day hackathon. If you spend one day of the hackathon learning how to um, use this new tool or framework or library, then that's a third of your time that you could have used towards um, building core features of your app. So it's fine if you want to use a new technology, but at least one person in your group should be familiar with it. That way, if you have any help or come across any issues, there's someone that you can consult with. Um, lastly, this is really important. You should de-scope unessential features. And to understand what your unessential features are, you and your team should think deeply about what the most critical features of your app are. Um, the most critical features would be the parts of your app that the user will spend the most time interacting with. Um, and I'll kind of go over how to figure out what your core features are and how to de-scope in the later slides. So planning is key for time management. If you plan well, it can save you a lot of time in the long run. Your group should figure out a mission statement. Um, the mission statement is the overarching reason for why your app exists. Um, having a purpose will help guide your team throughout the coding process. Um, one example of a mission statement for a to-do app is right here is to promote a calmer, more balanced, more fulfilling way to work and live by helping people organize their lives. Um, and this is a mission statement for an existing to-do app. So as you can see, it isn't technical at all. It doesn't talk about the implementation. 
it's more about why you and your team came together to build this app. Um, this kind of just helps your team be on the same page when you're developing, designing, um, to have this mission statement in mind. Also, you should decide on your core features. So, um, like I said earlier, figuring out what your core features will help you prioritize and spend your time um, more valuably and more wisely, rather than on things that aren't as important to your app. Um, sketching and designing the app architecture. So besides uh, thinking about the architecture in terms of the back end, the front end, um, what database you're gonna use, whether or not it's going to be a web app or an iOS app or an Android app. Also think about the screens of the app and you should have no more than six screens. Um, if you have more than six screens, you're focusing more on quantity rather than quality. And because there's a time constraint, you wanna, again, just drive home those core features and focus on uh, what's most important to your app. So I think Blue Hannah's doing a presentation tomorrow about prototyping. She'll go into more about how to prototype and um, she'll have a system for, you know, designing screens and cutting it down to just six screens. So she'll go into more detail tomorrow. Um, you should also assign roles. So besides having the back end role, the front end role, the design role, think about who's going to be the presenter, um, have a backup presenter, who's going to be the group leader to keep people on time and um, on task, make sure that nobody's blocked. Um, and then research what tools you're going to use before diving into coding. This kind of goes into the planning the app architecture, but you don't want to start with one framework only to realize that due to technical constraints, you can't use it to build out an important feature. Um, also break down the hackathon into tasks and make sure everyone knows what they're doing. So, Breaking it down into tasks makes it more manageable to tackle features. And if possible, you can have multiple people working on the same feature in parallel. For example, the back end can be built while the UX design is still being worked on. And um, I'll have an example on the next few slides on how to break down, uh, break down an example app into different tasks. Lastly, always be communicating and updating your team. This is a remote hackathon, so communication is really important. If you're stuck on something, let your group know. Um, everyone can get together and figure out what should be done if you're stuck, whether or not um, someone can help with that, you can reassign the task, or just drop that task or feature completely if possible. So good communication and planning will be key to your success. And here's a really simple example for um, breaking out features of a to-do app. Let's say that my hackathon app is a to-do app. Really simple example, but just bear with me on this. Um, I've broken out the app into three different features. We have core features, secondary features, and non-essential features. Core features are, like I mentioned earlier, the most important features of your app, the features that your user will be interacting with the most. So you want to spend most of your time, if not all of your time, on these four features. Secondary features are nice to have features that also add value to the app, but are less important and um, kind of second priority. Features that you would do after completing your core features. Um, so for the core features would be creating a to-do item, marking it as complete, deleting a to-do item. Secondary features would be creating to-do lists, persisting to a database, reordering the to-do items in a list. Non-essential features would be login, push notifications, profiles, sharing to social media, and searching for to-dos. 
So before you guys get into coding, you guys should have an idea of what your core features, secondary features, and non-essential features are. Um, and this doesn't have to be set in stone. You can change it as needed throughout the whole uh, hackathon. So breaking down your app into tasks. So here's an example of breaking down the to-do app, very simple to-do app into tasks. I have essential tasks and secondary tasks. And these are similar to the features because the essential tasks will support the essential features that make up your app. And the secondary tasks are um, supporting the, those secondary features that you'll do after the essential tasks are done. So um, I have here for essential tasks, create the React app, design the UI for the to-do page, uh, complete the to-do functionality, implement UI designs. This is really simple. There's probably gonna be a lot more, um, but I wanted to emphasize kind of some of these tasks like creating the React app, um, designing the UI. Don't forget to do the configuration um, because there's always going to be, it's always going to take more time than you think. Um, so make sure that the setup and config, configuration are uh, its own tasks. Also, try not to be blocked by other team members. You can have someone create to, oh, the to-do functionality before um, waiting for the UI for the to-do page. So if you're that way, you're not waiting on designs uh, before building up the functionality, and you can spend more time and be more productive. And if anyone has questions, feel free to interrupt. Cool. And how would you estimate task completion? Um, after breaking down your tasks, your team should assign time estimates to tasks to better understand whether the plan is achievable in the time uh, given and the time left for the hackathon. One strategy is time boxing tasks per person. So on this table, we have 30 minutes or less being one point, an hour to three hours being two points, half a day, four points, and one day, eight points. If the task that you're assigning is going to take more than one day, break it up into smaller subtasks. So breaking out features into time boxes can help your team visualize the amount of work that's being distributed. You can see if one person has too many points um, or if one person doesn't have enough points, then maybe you can redistribute the amount of tasks and work. If the points don't add up to the amount of time left in the hackathon, then you should descope, cut out the features, or uh, look into reassigning the tasks. Um, so this can be useful uh, just as an estimate, um, but also be sure to give yourself a buffer time when estimating tasks. If you think it's gonna take 30 minutes to set up the React app, give yourself one to three hours just in case something pops up or something happens. Management. Um, so ideally, your group should sit next to each other. Uh, but if remote, like in this case, then your group should be regularly communicating in the same Slack channel, making sure to leave that Slack channel open at all times. And again, this is just to have that open channel of communication um, so everyone knows what's happening in their tasks and making sure no one is behind. Use headphones and whatever you need to do to maintain focus. Um, have everyone in the team use one chat platform only, uh, just so that people aren't scattered using multiple platforms. I highly recommend using a project and task management tool to simplify and reduce meeting time. Um, there's a lot of good ones that are available. I'll have a few examples in the few slides uh, and links with them as well. However, if your team is already using a number of new tools and technologies for the hackathon and no one has used a project or task management system before, it's 
totally fine to not use one of these cost management tools and just use something like Google Sheets or something that you're familiar with to track tasks with instead. Um, so here's one of the project task management examples. You guys may be familiar with these. This is Trello. There's a link here. You'll be able to click this. Um, and I think Yasmin will send out these slides too. I'm just seeing this question. My team will create a website. We will run the main services. Is it considered a prototype or demo for the startup? Um, so for the pitch, I think you'll be doing a demo and you'll be showing that as well. And we'll get to that at the very end. Um, this is GitHub project boards. And this is Asana. So I also highly recommend making regular stand-up check-ins with your group. Um, this would be a time where every member would check in with where they're at with their tasks. If anyone is stuck or taking longer than their time box, reach out quickly. The team together can decide to continue because it may be fine. Um, hard code if it's necessary. Um, reassign the task to someone else or drop the task or feature completely. This is also a good time to assign new tasks if needed. Um, and it's the group leader's responsibility to keep the team on task and on time during these meetings. Uh, so the group leader and the team can decide how often to do these stand-up check-ins, whether or not that be every few hours or once a day, once at the end of the day. Um, it's whatever works best for your team. Technical decisions. So, um, these are just guidelines. You don't have to follow these strictly. Uh, I do think that this first bullet point is the most important guideline though. You should, when selecting tools and frameworks, use a majority set of tools that are familiar to you. Um, this is a hackathon, so because there's only three days, you don't want to be spending all of this time learning something that's new. Um, so this is the most important Thing to keep in mind. Um, everything else is just a nice to have. So if you do know a lot of tools, languages, and frameworks, uh, try to select tools and languages that are built in the same ecosystem. For example, Node, React, JavaScript, Python, Django, and Jinja. Um, this is just for productivity gains. Uh, it makes it easier to develop quicker. Also, stick to default configuration options and standard code convention. Um, no need to use custom configuration for a library framework if it's not necessary. Also, try to use well-supported versions that, rather than those that are abandoned or in beta. Um, this just makes it so if you're having any issues, you'll be able to find questions to your answers more easily. Um, and it's less likely that there's going to be bugs or issues with the versions. So some nice to haves are uh, picking opinionated libraries and frameworks that provide a lot of default configuration that save you time. Um, so opinionated libraries and frameworks are those that are inflexible pretty much. They don't allow for too much configuration. Um, one example is meteor.js. If you don't know opinionated libraries and frameworks, that's really fine as well. Um, I also highly recommend using preset boilerplate and configuration whenever you can. Um, boilerplate code is just uh, re reusable code that you can use uh, to help you save a lot of time with the setup. So a few examples are Create React App, which if you aren't familiar with, is from the Facebook team. It can help you set up a React ecosystem from scratch really quickly. Um, can save you time on simple errors during the setup process. 
there's also Material UI instead of building your own React app. Oh, sorry. Let me see the question. Develop a full app or is it enough to design this? So just the most important interfaces is uh, more important than developing a full app. Um, focus on the core features of your app. So you don't need to have login, logout functionality. Um, if database, database persistence isn't important to the core of your app, you don't need to have that. So I don't think it should necessarily be a full app. Um, it'd be great if it is, if it's a simple app, but um, just the most important interfaces are important. So for Material UI, um, that's a component library that you can use instead of building your own React UX components, to so save you more time. And then this link over here will have some more boilerplates. Um, there's some node boilerplates, Rails, Django, and Laravel. So feel free to check those out. You can put this out in the link here too. Cool. So um, this isn't as important, but being mindful of the library size can help you save time when you're restarting your app over and over. If you have a lot of dependencies, it's just gonna take longer for your app to be low when you're debugging and developing. Um, and the second bullet point is more so related to API selection. Uh, but if you integrate with cool and interesting APIs, it can quickly add value and functionality if used correctly, it can make your app stand out from the other groups. Uh, so for example, you can integrate with a, uh, a data set API and use that for visualizing your app. So someone's asking how to demo the app at the end. Um, well, you guys will have time. I think you'll be able to share your screen and demo the app. And I'll talk a little bit about at the end of uh, what you should talk about, and what you should demo. So descoping, descoping is really important. Um, you don't want to focus all of your time uh, on making all of these features that don't end up adding value to kind of like the mission statement of your app. Um, so descoping on essential features so your team can focus more on the core functionality of your app is really important. And descoping may look like hard coding a feature. So if you want to show the login in your demo, which I, I don't recommend unless it's really important, um, I would suggest a hard code for login. Um, cutting a feature would be descoping. Reassigning a team member with more experience to that tool is an example of descoping. Using lorem ipsum fake copy instead of writing your own creative co content copy. Using pre-made UI components and styles from libraries uh, rather than building from scratch. So focus and build out your core functionality, your core features as much as possible. Uh, but since this is a hackathon, we understand that there are time constraints and it's okay to hard code if you're running out of time. Um, so if you need to, you can fake the login call, you can fake unimportant API calls, you can fake things like search results, um, as well as other things that aren't as important. But um, just do your best to build out those core features. This is an example of warm ipsum content. So you shouldn't really be writing any creative content yourself that uh, would just take up too much time. Unless it's really necessary for the value of your app, then just use fake copy instead. Now, troubleshooting. So when dealing with issues, um, which are gonna be bound to happen, make sure to uh, go through this list before feeling that, like you're stuck. So the first thing you should do is 
make sure that the error is reproducible. Um, if you are not able to get the same error after restarting your computer, uh, then it's probably just a one-time thing. If the error only happens on a certain browser or a certain uh, OS system or only on your computer and not your teammate's computer, that can help you isolate where the issue is coming from. Also, before coding a solution or removing code as a solution, be sure you know exactly what the problem is so you're not just blindly trying to fix it. Um, and once you do try and code a solution or remove code for a solution, if that doesn't work, revert those changes. Otherwise, you're going to be coding on top of all of these other patches um, and you might introduce side effects or more bugs. Check all obvious error sources. This is pretty straightforward. Um, making sure that you're connected to the server, that your internet's working, that your network settings are uh, correct. Um, and for number four, this is usually what I do when I'm stuck um, and I can't figure out what the solution is. I'll divide up the operation into parts that are working and parts that are not. Um, so what this means is you're stepping through the code from the beginning to the end. Uh, whether or not that's through a debugger or through console logs. And you're comparing what should be happening to what is happening. So what you can do is look at the inputs and outputs of each step and compare them to what you're expecting. And you can see exactly which step the uh, input or output is being changed to help you exactly isolate where your bug is. If you reach a dead end, that's okay, that happens. Um, one last thing you can do is take a step back, reassess your assumptions. Um, what are you assuming? Is it possible that one of your assumptions is incorrect? Um, that, could be, that could be something that is uh, causing you to have an issue. Um, and if possible, de-scope if you're at a dead end, if you still, can't figure out what's wrong, you've consulted with your team, you've consulted with resources like Stack Overflow, Git issues, change logs, um, Slack communities, then just try and do scope or um, try and talk to your team about figuring out a different alternative if possible. Uh, so resources available are you know, Stack Overflow, Git issues, change logs. Also, some well-supported libraries will have Slack communities that are available. Um, and oftentimes, these people are really active. They're willing to help if you have any questions. So uh, don't forget to look into those as a resource. Cool. And documentation and pitch. So the documentation is what would go along with your code. And I highly recommend writing at least some basic documentation for your app in a readme. Um, what your documentation would include would be, what is your app? Um, why you guys decided to come together to create the app? Uh, your mission statement, how to start the app, and also consider who will be reading your readme in the future. Um, most likely it's your future self for resume building. Um, you most likely want to show off this awesome app that you created for the hackathon. Uh, it could also be your future interviewer assessing your previous projects, or it could be open source contributors who want to help um, add new features and extend the app. So for your demo, um, you guys will be sharing your screen uh, to show the judges what your app is. Um, your demo should demonstrate the technical aspects of your product, and you should focus on the core features of your app. So I keep using this login, logout example, but um, you don't need to show non-essential features like login or logout or or sharing a social media um, in your app if it's not a core feature. Um, so for the to-do app, if I were to do a demo, I would focus on the 
creating of a to-do, the deleting of a to-do, marking the to-do as complete, um, reordering to-do items, the kind of core features that make up the app, those should be emphasized during the demo. Um, that way you'll be able to focus more on what makes your product unique. If you're mentioning tools, frameworks, or APIs, then justify the reason for using them. Uh, don't say that you're integrating with the Twitter API because everyone else is using that. Also, prepare for a demo gone wrong. Um, you know, hopefully this won't happen to anyone, but it's always good to have a backup plan. So in case something happens during the demo, have a backup PowerPoint presentation that's ready with just screenshots of your demo and be able to just click through the presentation and narrate it as though you were going through the demo. Um, also, because this is probably gonna be a remote uh, presentation, have a backup presenter in case um, the presenter's Wi-Fi goes down. Um, and I think that could be the same for whoever's pitching. If you have a different person who's pitching, have a backup picture in case their Wi-Fi goes down. Um, as for the pitch, uh, before you go into your demo, you'll be talking a little bit about your app and your product and why you guys decided to build it. Um, the pitch should be a story. Uh, you should frame your work as a solution to a problem. And the problem should be broad enough that everyone will agree it needs to be a solution. Uh, and try to be concise. Um, you, you don't want to go on too long in the pitch, but be concise about why your judges should be excited about your app. Then you can dive to immediately into the demo. Um, and one formula for a pitch oops, down here is a uh, kind of in the middle. This has never been possible before with issue that is a big problem. This will make everyone sad. We have a unique technology and idea that will be the only thing that can solve this, which makes everyone happy. Then you go into the how. The how is um, kind of like the technical aspects of your product. And then you can go into the demo after that. So, this should be short. Um, you don't want to go on too much about it. Also, make sure to address all parts of the scoring rubric. So keep that in mind when you're pitching. If um, the judgment is around idea or criteria, then focus on the product that is being produced so that you can show and um, focus on the product and also plans for extensibility and new features that you would add in the future. If the judgment is technical, then focus on the implementation and what the team has learned from the technical implementation and what you guys would do to iterate. Uh, again, if you're using cool or flashy new technology, then provide good justification for using it. Um, most importantly, it's learning experience for everyone, no matter the outcome, so have fun. If anyone has any questions um, or wants me to go deeper into any of the previous slides, feel free to ask. Um, thank you. Um, so thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you. Shukran, shukran, Alec, Jessica. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. Also, uh, yeah, now we can end the interpretation uh, at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk to everyone. So thanks again, Jessica, for the interpretation, and thanks for Sh shukran, Jessica, for the presentation. Thank you, uh, shukran. <laughs> uh,
عندكم حضرتوا هلا بس شيء سريع اذا اي حدا عنده سؤال بيقدر يحطه هون بالعربي وبالانجلش واحنا رح نترجم الاسئله جيسيكا اي واز جست تيلينج ذيم ذات دي كان اسك ذير كويستشنز ان اربيك اور انجلش اند ذن وير جينا ترانسليت ام سو وي هاف ما اسكينج دو وي توك ابوت ذا سلايدز بيفور ذا لاست وان يو توك ابوت اي بي ايز اند framework do you want to cover this yeah so what's the question he says can we talk about the slide before the last one you talked about the apis and framework i don't know maybe can you like just touch base on this slide in general the, the pitch slide uh the one about framework and api mm -hmm. and we're back to interpretation as well okay uh Is it this slide? Framework and API. Maybe this one. So, um, do you know if this is the slide? Um, is, is that the slide? Mah, is that the slide? Can you, where you mentioned not talking about them? Is this the slide, the one we're on? Who do you can interpret? Well, okay, I can talk about this slide. Um, so integrating with cool and interesting APIs can add value. Mm -hmm. So if you can find uh, an API that uh, supports your app and your mission, Um, then I highly recommend trying to integrate with it because it can make your app stand out from other groups. Um, so one example is using a API that has a large data set that you can use to either visualize or populate data in your app. Um, maybe one example is all of the public data available for, um, uh, let's say like from, UNICEF, maybe UNICEF has an API that offers all of the past information on global hunger levels, for example. Um, if you can use that, that could potentially make your app stand out from other groups. Any other questions? I guess you have a question from Karine here. Do you want to take it? Oh, yes, I see that. Maybe that. Okay, so Karine's question. Um, my team will have a website as part of the project. We can show the flow chart of the website and create a user interface to show the main elements of the site. Should we provide a fully functional website at the end or demonstrate how the website will work using video editing or power editing can be enough? Um, so Kareem, you should have a website that you demo at the very end. Um, if anything goes wrong with the website, you should have a backup presentation of PowerPoint. But um, I think the website Having, a, having your demo with the website will be more powerful than the PowerPoint presentation. So yes, it should be a fully functional website at the very end, ideally. Um, but if something goes wrong, then you can use a backup PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and then if it's allowed to use fake APIs and show fake data, what should we do in the back end? Um, So the fake APIs should really be at your own discretion. It should only be used if it's not important. But if your app is integral upon some APIs, then uh, that would make it, I, I would say that would make it like a core feature. Um, and if you do decide to integrate to in a really important API or um, you know, build out the back end, which I, I do recommend if it's core feature of your app, then talk about it in the demo and explain, hey, like we actually integrated with UNICEF API um, that will give you points at the very end. So 
when thinking about your app, break it into the core features, the secondary features, and the non-essential features. And if connecting the back end is part of the core feature, then you should definitely connect to the back end. Um, what's the max time demo shall have in your opinion? Uh, how long is the whole pitch? Is it three, four minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes. That includes demo and pitch. I would say if it's three minutes total, I would say do one minute for the pitch and then two minutes for the demo. Um, I think the demo should be the majority of the pitch. Okay. How do you choose technology that you should use, PHP, Java, or Python? Um, so this is going to be dependent on what languages you and your team knows. Uh, don't use new technologies if you can't help it. So if you're familiar with PHP, then use PHP. If you're familiar with Java, use Java. If you know multiple languages, then you should try and evaluate which one would be the best for the app that you're using. Um, and maybe there's, if there's more people on your team that know that language, maybe that's a better language to pick. Okay. Do we have to finish the whole app? So the, not necessarily because a whole app would include things like log in, log out, you know, profiles, commenting, searching, um, those things aren't as important. So I would say no, you would just need to finish the most important aspects of your app. So going back to the to-do example. Um, so if I were to build a to-do app for the hackathon, um, at the demo, I think it's okay if you're just showing off the core features of create a to-do item, mark to-do item, delete a to-do item. Obviously, this is a really simple app to do app, but you don't need to build out any of these non-essential features. If you if you do want to include them, you can just hard code it, but try not to focus any of your time on these non-essential features. Um, the secondary features would be features that you can work on after you complete the core features. Um, I don't know about the logistics of losing a team member. Maybe Yasmin can answer that. Uh, you're asking, I'm sorry, what's the question here? Uh, what do you do if you lose a team member? Are we allowed to have a replacement? Yes, you are allowed to have a replacement. You can basically ask this question in the help desk channel in the Slack. Uh, but generally, you still have until 9 p.m. to update your team members, and then you can still update them throughout the hackathon. Uh, the help desk people can help you more on that. Um, for a sample of a demo app, I will have to go look for one. Um, online so maybe i can send that to you yasmin afterwards of course please do this you can send us any uh, samples that you have and from my side i will ask our team to share the demos that were pitched at the end in the netherlands at the crisis and maybe they can look at the winners pitches and that can be useful for them so we, we hopefully will share some of that um, and can we use web app as responsive instead of actually developing an app? I believe so, right? They can just build a website instead of a mobile app. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, great questions, guys. Awesome. And a commerce question is again about, do we need to build a complete application or just have the idea and the general design clear? Um, it, it doesn't need to be complete, but you should have the core features built out. Um, you should have, you know, working technical aspects of your app. Um, but complete, complete, you know, this doesn't need to be 
it's only three days. So I think the judges will understand if you don't have some of the secondary features or non-essential features done. We add new features to existing apps or software. Um, I don't know, I think the app has to be built in fresh. For this question and the question below, uh, it's better to add them on Slack because they have to do with the judging criteria, but just like the quick answer is that you need to add something new, a new feature um, that you have built during the hackathon. You need to like refine the thing you already have during the hackathon. Okay, so they can use an existing app and add a new feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, uh, for the joining team, ask this question on Slack again. So, uh, seems like these are all the questions related to the webinar. Uh, Jessica, once again, thank you very much. This was very helpful. Um, and we are so happy that you joined us today for this um, webinar. You're welcome. You're all a good friend of GSV. We're very proud to have you in our network. Oh, I'm proud to be in your guys' network. Thank you so much thank for you, having me. Yeah, thank you. And then for all of you watching us, I know this day, this day has been long and it's not even close to finish. Um, I know that you've worked so hard Hard. I wish you all the best of luck um, and I hope you all like all the best with the work to come. Uh, this is the last webinar we have for you today. Uh, so we're going to leave you now hoping to see you again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Don't forget to tune in for the kickoff and good luck with all the work you have. For any other questions related to the hackathon or any other logistics stuff, post it on Slack. And have a good night, everyone. Oh, thank you. See you. Bye-bye.